You know, it's been interesting to see who among MAGA is willing to voice their support for this effort to oust Mike Johnson, given the stakes right now and how disastrous politically it could be if they indeed went forward with this ouster attempt. And we've been covering how Marjorie Taylor Greene is leading this. She filed the motion to vacate, but hasn't yet called it to a vote, using that as leverage and then demanding that Mike Johnson resigns. And now she's joined by two other Republicans, one of them being Thomas Massey, that you'll hear Lauren Boebert responding to in just a second. But I was interested in the fact that Lauren Boebert, who normally would love to jump in the mix in these sorts of chaotic stunts and get the attention and the MAGA brownie points that come with the constant prevention of serious governance, which is what this is, but she's been strangely uncharacteristically quiet about it. And so I did find her appearing on Real America's Voices Stinchfield tonight with Greg Stinchfield and explaining what her stance is. And within that, there's some strange clips that we'll look at. And I'll just warn you, content warning everybody, prepare yourself. Lauren Boebert's going to try to do humor, execute comedy, and so just just get ready for that. That doesn't uh, go particularly well, as you're about to see. So here's Lauren Boebert. Again, wants to be thought of as as MAGA as they come, but not on board with the MAGA backlash to Mike Johnson in full. And here's how she explains it. Well, I love Congressman Thomas Massey. He's the co-chair of the Second Amendment Caucus here in Washington, D.C. with me. And I would give you a list of other members' names in that caucus, but you know we're against the registry, so can't provide that. <laughs> uh, but I do believe that uh, Congressman Massey's position is the most reasonable position for someone who's wanting to go forward with this motion to vacate. I'm going to really quickly pause your viewing of this video to ask you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just click that subscribe button plus the like button as well and the alert bell so you get notifications. Back to it. Uh, saying, hey, let's take care of this behind closed doors. We've already had this fight publicly twice this Congress. Uh, so first with the, the initial speaker and then with a motion to vacate. So let's keep this behind closed doors. I'm not in, in support of vacating the speaker, sending him on a vacation, uh, but I, I'm just as frustrated. I'm sorry. What, what is she saying? Stop it with the jokes. They're, just, they're, not, they're not landing, Lauren. Um, she's in a conference meeting. She's like, guys, I want to get rid of Mike Johnson too, but then vacate then we would send him on a vacation that's what that means when obviously he would stay a congressman if you weren't speaker uh but uh typical i i know she just connected the words in her brain but still a strange thought there the first joke though is is the vile one and i'll play more from the interview in just a second but she is joking about the fact that she's against even basic steps to address gun violence in the united states when saying we're against registry, so uh, I can't give you the names of the other people in the Second Amendment caucus. She's emphasizing that her and her cohort are so unwilling to even take preliminary steps toward decreasing the gun violence epidemic in the United States that is so much more significant and devastating than any other developed country. And they are excited about and giddy about fighting against the very solutions to the problems we experience uniquely badly in this country. Even just registering your firearm is too far for Lauren Bober. And I just want to say, I haven't said this in a while because we haven't been talking about gun violence, but to return to it, remember Lauren Bober, a lot of these MAGA figures spend so much time demagoguing about and fear mongering about issues and their justification for targeting communities often and for wild fear mongering is oh we're doing it because we want to protect the kids or we're removing certain books because we want to protect the kids and that falls apart when you understand the leading cause of death for children in the united states is firearms and lauren bowart wants to do absolutely nothing nothing in terms of common sense gun regulations to change that and we know we know that we could make a difference by doing those sorts of things so you can't refuse to do anything about the leading cause of death for children 
and also say that you're in favor of protecting the kids and that's your top priority. And that's why drag queens should be banned or something. It's just wildly inconsistent and disgusting. And so then for her to joke about the fact that she wants to do absolutely nothing about that, and I know I'm reading a lot into her joke, but I do think it's important to point this out, is a pretty, pretty unfortunate statement. Here's more. It's when you are having legislation come to the floor that has more Democrat support than Republican support, then there is a problem. When we can't come to an agreement and get the most conservative package for legislation passed out of the House and then recognize we are in divided government and come to an agreement together on what that final passage looks like, then we have a problem. And it's been very disappointing to be in these meetings with the speaker and hear about all of the impossibilities and the natural circumstances rather than taking a stand for America and and putting forward the best strongest possible plan that includes border security so can you tell how disoriented she is there she is so unable to really articulate what it is that she wants she just kept repeating the general statement the best package we can get Okay, but what does that mean? And then finally, she gives something specific, which is, quote unquote, securing the border. And uh, I did a whole segment about this yesterday. You can go watch it. And uh, it, it relates to the border. And I want to prevent myself from launching into a whole rant about this because I've done it now so many times. But it's the Lauren Boberts. It's the Marjorie Greens. It's Donald Trump directing MAG Republicans to do this that are responsible for killing the legislation on the border so now they're saying we can't give for example aid to ukraine because we need to first secure our border that should be the top priority but they prevented the border legislation from getting passed i know what you're thinking oh that's because it was liberal it was woke it was marxist it was communist it was socialist it was fascist it was <laughs> trump strings those all together so now i've got in the habit of doing it uh no, the Border Patrol Union endorsed it and the Border Patrol Union uh, also endorsed Trump last go round. So it's a very conservative organization and it still was for this. And this had things in it to invest more in border security, to invest more in the asylum process, to give the president new authorities that he doesn't have and uh, to address fentanyl coming across the southern border. So no, just like how you can't say you want to protect the kids and then prevent anything from being done to protect the kids. You can't say you want to secure the border or do anything about the border if, number one, you're lying about what is happening at the border, and number two, you're preventing things from being done. So that should be said. Here's more from earlier in this interview. Republican Congresswoman from Colorado, our good friend Lauren Boebert, is back with us. Congresswoman, welcome to the program. Grant, thanks so much for having me on. Um, what a disastrous week yet again here in Washington, D.C., watching America get sold out. Um, this is so discouraging. We have all of these fear over freedom tactics. But Grant, I think you and I have similar concerns. If we don't put our own country first, if we don't secure our border, or get our spending under control, there's not going to be an America to stand with our allies. So we went through an analysis recently that showed how we would not have the problem we currently have with debt if it weren't for the Republican tax cuts over the last couple of decades and the tax cuts that so often disproportionately benefited those at the top of the economic ladder. And so they're just not the fiscal responsible party. It's ridiculous. But also, again, you hear it there. We can't do anything. We can't help Ukraine. We can't I don't even know. Keep the lights on in the House of Representatives until we we pass a border bill, but then we're going to block the border bills because, and some people said this explicitly, we don't want to give Biden a political win on the border. It's a depraved world out there, but at least we have each other. <laughs> and uh, I guess we can rest assured with that fact. Let me know what you thought of all that in the comments.